President, please be seated. Le Président, veuillez vous asseoir. The court is now back in session. Reprise des débats. The trial chamber next invites the parties to make submissions on the order La of the presentation of evidence with an aim to maximize the efficiency, logistics, and coherence de preuve, afin de of the proceedings through a clear trial structure. Les the co-prosecutors have proposed that case 02-02 be divided into five phases, that is, role of the accused, security centers, treatment of targeted groups, work size and regulation of a marriage nationwide, that is, a document A305-6. The co-prosecutors have proposed the following order of trial. S21, internal purchase, role of the accused, JCE witnesses, Tram Co Cooperative, Grand Tajan Security Center, O Consign Security Center, Nung Krao Security Center, Genocide of Vietnamese, Genocide of Chan, First Genjuri Dam Worksite, Drapian Tmo Dam Worksite, Kampong Chang Airport Worksite, Forced Marriage, and Overview. The lead co-lawyers have proposed the following order of trial. S21, internal purchase, S21, role of the accused, JCE witnesses, Tram Co Cooperatives and Grand Tajan Security Center, treatment of Buddhist, treatment of Vietnamese, treatment of Chan, movement of population phase two, as it relates to the treatment of Jam, first January Dam work site, the Bang Tmo Dam work site, Kampong Chang Airport work site, Open Science Security Center, regulation of marriage and experts. That is document E305-7.1.4. The trial chamber invites the defense teams to comment on these proposed orders of trial. Each team has no more than 15 minutes. And first, I'd like to give the floor to Nunchi's defense. You may proceed. Thank you, Mr. Uh, please wait. Le président, uh, defense counsel, please wait. I think there is uh, one issue. Uh, Pei Ong, you may proceed. Maître Pei Ong, vous avez la parole. Pei Ong, uh, to your honors, I apologize for my interruption. Excusez-moi de demander la parole. In order to avoid the uh, the order of a trial proposed by the lead co-lawyers for a civil party. Concernant l'ordre proposé par les co-avocats principaux pour les parties civiles, we would like to briefly mention the the notion behind uh, our request for the uh, proposed uh, order of trial, and we would like to seek uh, also comments and remarks from other parties. I understand the importance of the role of the co-prosecutors and their proposal for uh, the order of a trial. And I believe it is not necessary for other parties uh, to remark on the order of trial proposed by the co-prosecutors. President, uh, thank you for uh, your observation before the floor is given uh, to the defense. And now the defense for Nunti, uh, you uh, may proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. Maître Coupé. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Uh, concerning the order of presentation of evidence, uh, we note 
uh, that the prosecutions and lead co-lawyers' submissions on the different topics that would be heard at trial are based upon the witnesses, uh, civil parties, and experts they propose to call in case 002-02. We have requested to call several experts and witnesses concerning a topic that is not among those already proposed by the prosecution and uh, the, the lead co-lawyer, and that is the existence and character of an armed conflict. The trial chamber has included this topic uh, within the scope of case 002-02 as part of the general factual 002 findings 002 that will be uh, disputed in the trial. Uh, it is in fact the only topic among the general factual findings that has not already been heard in the case 002-01 trial. Mr. President, it is our view that the question concerning the existence and character of an armed conflict is an essential uh, contextual topic, especially since we will argue that there existed uh, an internal uh, or non-international armed conflict in parallel to and intertwined with the international armed conflict. Non international qui existait the relevant facts in relation to the existence of an armed conflict fundamentally affect the arguments that the parties may put forward in relation to numerous crime sites and crimes, uh, que les uh, most particularly in relation to the S21 Security Center and the internal, internal purges, which both uh, the prosecution and lead co-lawyers have proposed as the first two topics to be heard at trial. Pour, uh, in addition, it is at the very heart of our theory of the case. Therefore, we submit that it is logical that the topic of the existence and character of, of an armed conflict in the period of 75-79 be the first topic addressed in uh, case 00-2 trial. Following the existence of an armed uh, conflict, that matter, we would concur with the prosecution and the lead co-lawyer's proposal that the next two topics to be heard armé, should be the S21 Security Center and the internal purges. For us, these topics are also essential to our theory of the case, interne, uh, so much uh, so that the majority de, de of witnesses, défense, civil parties and experts we have requested have been requested at least in part for their ability uh, to testify in relation to these very topics. De leur capacité à témoigner Unlike ce qui ces deux uh, either the prosecution or uh, the lead co-lawyers, the next topics we would propose to be heard at trial are the genocide of the Vietnamese, pour nous then the genocide of the Chang, and then the Kampong Chang airport work site. We submit that these topics are interlinked with and build on the topics of the armed conflict, the S21 Security Center, and the internal purges. The charge of the genocide of the Vietnamese will be affected by submissions in relation to an armed conflict with Vietnam, the treatment of the Vietnamese in the Eastern Zone, and our submissions concerning Vietnam's long-term aggressive posture, posture against Cambodia in general, and the democratic Kampuchea in particular. The charge of genocide of the Cham will be affected by submissions in relation to internal disturbances and sabotage actions in the Eastern Zone which we will discuss during the trial segments uh, on the S21 Security Center and the internal purges. Uh, and the charges relating to the Kampong Chang Airport work site will be affected by submissions concerning policies responding to internal enemies within the Revolutionary Army of Kampuchea, also to be discussed during the trial segments on the S21 Security Center and the internal purges. Therefore, Mr. President, in our view, it would seem logical that these topics should be the next uh, to be heard at the second trial. 
dans l'ordre we donc, also submit that the topic of the role of the accused and uh, joint criminal enterprise be the last topic to be heard at trial nous proposons que uh, this is because it is our view that party submissions concerning the topic procès. depend fundamentally on the submissions made concerning the facts relating to the other crime sites and charges. Des, uh, Thus, in our view, uh, it is logical les for it to be heard after those topics. Mr. President, to uh, the last point, we have no other submissions uh, regarding the hearing sequencing for other topics within the scope of case uh, 002 02. However, we do have a final submission in relation to sequencing, and this relates to two witnesses we have requested to be heard at trial. Et ceci concerne deux témoins dont nous avons demandé la comparution. As we has, as we have noted in our updated witness list, that is document number E305-4.1, e uh, our, requ our requested witness, uh, T, uh, sorry, 2 TCW923, uh, uh, he is uh, 96 years old, while our requested witness, 2 TCW946 is 80 years old. And given their uh, advanced age, uh, we request that these two witnesses to be the very first witnesses to be heard at trial, and that, if necessary, their testimony be given uh, via audiovisual link. Um, so these two witnesses are not necessarily related to the sequencing of the order, but because of their advanced age, we would like to see them as the exception to the proposed sequencing of the trial. Thank you very much. President, thank you, Council Victor Coupe, and Madam Council for Kiss and Pawn, you may proceed. La défense de Kiss and Pawn, you have the floor. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Je vais euh, tout d'abord commencer par les points like euh, sur lesquels nous sommes d'accord avec euh, la euh, défense de Nonchea, à savoir que l'on puisse euh, effectivement commencer par euh, la question du conflit armé et terminer euh, par le rôle des accusés hein, pour les raisons qu'il a développées. C'est le ça nous semble logique et euh, plus à même euh, de, de permettre euh, l'utilisation de tous les éléments qui euh, euh, seront exploités euh, entre, entre, ces deux, entre ces deux thèmes. En revanche, sur euh, la séquence à l'intérieur hein, de ces deux thèmes, hein, nous souhaitons simplement euh, que l'on puisse respecter l'ordre euh, de l'ordonnance de clôture, à savoir tout d'abord les coopératives et sites de travail, ensuite les centres de sécurité, ensuite les mesures visant les groupes spécifiques avec des placements de la population qui étaient à un autre ordre mais qui nous semble cohérent, et enfin la réglementation du mariage. Je précise que Parler des coopératives et sites de travail euh, en début hein, de procès 002 après le conflit armé nous semble logique puisque lorsque euh, nous avons terminé hein, 002 hein, bar 1, nous avons parlé des déplacements de population et de l'arrivée dans euh, les coopératives et nous nous sommes en gros arrêtés là sur l'examen de la preuve et euh, d'un point de vue chronologique et euh, d'un point de vue euh, examen de la preuve, cela nous semble euh, plus adapté à, 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 au, niveau, au niveau des séquences. Voilà, ces observations étant faites, euh, encore une fois, nous euh, soutenons euh, les euh, deux points euh, développés par mon confrère euh, Copé, à savoir le conflit armé qui est effectivement un point essentiel pour la discussion des thèmes du procès numéro 2 various topics in case 002-02. Thank you, Council. Le President. Merci. Mr. Chamber, would I like now to invite the co-prosecutors and the lead co-lawyers to respond to the defense submissions. Les procureurs et les co-lawyers principaux pour les participants. They each have 15 minutes to provide their responses.
and first I'd like to give the floor to the prosecution. You Mr. may proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. Good morning, Your Honours. In his introductory remarks, uh, Mr. President uh, referred to the need to ensure the coherence of the trial structure and, and um, the need for that structure to be clear and logical. Uh, it's our proposal that the request by by the co-prosecutors and as largely uh, supported by the civil parties presents such a clear and coherent structure. Uh, and, and I'll explain that in, in brief terms before I uh, respond uh, to the defence's um, uh, proposed changes. As, as the President indicated, uh, we've proposed that the trial be uh, conducted by way of a series of, of segments, for, for want of a better term, uh, commencing with the role of the accused, within which the court would deal with allegations relating to S21, internal purges and roles of the accused. And can I say, generally speaking, that approach in dealing with uh, broad issues that affect the entire case uh, is consistent with the trial chamber's uh, management of the first trial. Uh, as to why S21 is included uh, by us and, and uh, I suspect by our learned friends, the Council for the Civil Parties in that group, is simply because S21, as we have submitted on many occasions, is the most representative of criminal uh, crime site uh, in this case as far as the allegations of the joint criminal enterprise uh, with respect to the targeting of enemies are concerned. Of course, it also relates uh, very much to the roles of the accused, both Nguyen and Kyusampan. This was a crime site. We allege, and the closing order alleges, established by the party centre, uh, and a crime site, uh, the leadership of which reported directly to the party centre. It received prisoners from the entire country and from all administrative, uh, civilian and military uh, structures of the Khmer Rouge. Here I'm, of course, paraphrasing the allegations in the closing order. To deal with internal des purges and roles in the accused the within that same de topic in our submission provides a, a clear foundation les and a basis nous, for an understanding, at least at that point, of the joint criminal enterprise and to then build on that uh, with the second segment, which, as, as Mr. President indicated, uh, covers three security centres, Krang Tachan, Okan Seng, and Phnom Krao. In our submission, it is then logical to move on to the issue of the targeting of specific groups, the Vietnamese and Chams, before turning to uh, a separate policy which deals with the operation of cooperatives and work sites, those being the 1st January Dam, the Dam, and the Kampong Airport. And following that, we have submitted that forced marriage charges should be heard, given that they relate uh, to allegations on a nationwide basis, and are therefore conducive to a separate uh, hearing of evidence on that issue. Um, and of course, we propose to conclude the trial with, a, with an overview for expert witnesses. Um, turning to the defence's proposal that the international armed conflict evidence be heard first, can I say initially that, of course, evidence of the international armed conflict will be heard throughout this trial. That is of necessity because, pursuant to the trial chamber's severance order, grave breaches of the Geneva Conventions form part of this trial, and the specific crime sites in relation to which grave breaches have been charged uh, include uh, S21 and Okan Seng Security Center. De de so, Okan Seng. in a way, by Pour following the order which we are proposing, Your Honours will in part also address the defence's uh, uh, wishes that the issue of international armed conflict or evidence on that issue la be considered. We don't think it's useful uh, to have a separate 
nous ne pensons pas qu'il soit utile d'avoir une phase particulière du processus sur l'existence de conflit, car ce conflit international, bien qu'il soit important, n'est pas à l'essentiel du dossier. Sûrement pas à la lumière de l'acte d'accusation. Can I remind everyone that pursuant to Rule 87, the prosecution bears the onus of proof in relation to all charges. And so, whilst we note, of course, that it is for the trial chamber to determine the order in which evidence is heard, we implore the trial chamber to follow the proposal we have set out and to enable us to present the evidence against the indictment in the manner in which. We say it's most conducive to the ascertainment of the truth. We don't believe that hearing cherry-picked sites as diverse as genocide of Vietnamese jams and of work sites is conducive, uh, particularly not at the start of the trial, to a broader understanding of the charges and the evidence. And the same remarks I would make in relation to hearing roles of the accused last. Um, the trial chamber, in our view, wisely decided to hear first evidence relating to authority structures, communications, and roles of the accused in the first trial. And the same logic should follow. Nothing of what my learned friends have said really compels your honours to, to do differently. Uh, can I turn to the issue of the two witnesses that my learned friend, Mr. Coppe, asked be heard first? Um, the prosecution does not oppose this request. The trial chamber has in the past prioritised the hearing of witnesses which, which are elderly or whose appearance uh, may may become difficult as the trial unfolds. So provided that the trial chamber uh, accepts that, those that the evidence proposed from those witnesses Nous is relevant and conducive to ascertaining the truth, we have no objection in particular si to them being scheduled in the early stages of the trial. La manifestation de la vérité, nous ne pas de les faire and lastly, can I make one practical request while I'm on my feet of the trial pratique. chamber? Um, in the first uh, trial, the Chamber generally proceeded Dans by way of procès, providing advanced lists of witnesses uh, to the parties at each, in each segment of the trial. De um, de we think that approach is, is sound, and we would encourage the Chamber, nous as far as is possible, bon approach, to nous consider and make decisions on uh, witnesses to be heard for each segment uh, in, in stages. Uh, to hear the parties on any further requests uh, that may arise, and to then inform the parties of, of the witnesses to be heard for each segment. So my proposal, uh, proposal of the prosecution is that you make decisions on witness selection in segments and then inform parties of your decisions, uh, hopefully with sufficient time for everyone to prepare. Mr. President, unless I can assist you further, uh, those would be my submissions in response. Voici donc la présentation. Je vous remercie. President, thank you. Merci. Tu m'as baissé un line to give the floor to the lead co-lawyers. Je laisse maintenant la parole aux co-avocats principaux. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. President. Une observation très courte en lien Just avec l'observation liminaire de mon, de mon bon conseil en Pique. Pour être clair, puisque la, la traduction en français ou en anglais ne l'était pas, nous souhaitons aujourd'hui oralement soutenir la proposition du bureau du procureur dans euh, le sequencing euh, du procès. Nous sommes conscients que le procureur a la charge de la preuve et donc nous estimons qu'il leur incombe de choisir euh, le sequencing qui leur paraît le plus opportun. Je me permets de le redire parce que ce n'était pas clair dans la traduction que j'ai eue en, en anglais et sur la dernière euh, observation euh, de notre confrère du côté du bureau du procureur, nous soutenons également cette requête d'avoir la Chambre décider segment par segment 
pour chaque liste de témoins et j'ajouterai que décidant segment par segment, nous souhaiterions que lorsque la Chambre décide des parties civiles qui lui paraissent les plus pertinentes, eh bien elle, elle puisse revenir vers les parties pour que nous puissions proposer des listes priorisées de parties civiles en fonction de la pertinence de leurs témoignages et de la valeur probante des témoignages pour que les personnes qui soient effectivement appelées devant votre chambre apportent le témoignage le plus pertinent et le plus utile possible. Je vous remercie. That would be the most relevant and the most useful Thank you, and uh, Pei Yang, you may proceed. Merci, la parole est à Maître Pei Yang. And once again, good morning, Mr. President Pei and Pei Yang, the journalists. I apologize if my previous statement uh, is unclear, but I believe it has been clarified by my international counterpart on the order of trial as proposed by the co-prosecutors as they are the initiator of the uh, case nous proposer et le fait que nous appuyons celui que propose le bureau des coprocureurs. And the remarks made by the defense teams, in particular in their request to hear, uh, je maintenant parler des demandes de la to défense, hear in the order of the facts presented in the uh, closing order, in our propose, view, that is not uh, necessary. What is important is that nous, what we uh, can manage nécessaire. so that the trial can be more effective. Est important, est une, un bon du And uh, in their uh, submission to start uh, with the armed conflict first, it is our view that that Sur le sujet fact is to be started armé. first. Uh, it would disrupt uh, the time and the flow of the proceedings. Nous sommes des que As other le parties, sur le sujet du for instance, our lead collier section to make a such a request to hear our civil parties' testimonies or other facts. And for that reason, the, the, the order of the trial cannot be efficient. And as uh, stated by my learned Counsel, the prosecutor, the armed conflict uh, issue comme rappelé le procureur. will be heard throughout uh, the segments of the trial. La question As du conflit armé international sera étudiée tout au long du procès. This issue is interlinked uh, with uh, other facts. Car elle est liée à d'autres faits. In their submission by Nunchi's defense on the hearing of the advanced age of the uh, witnesses, I believe uh, that is appropriate as we can start with the advanced age of witnesses. Avec, uh, la and la uh, likewise, the civil parties who have the, uh, an advanced age shall be heard at the beginning of uh, the trial. Il est approprié These are uh, uh, my submissions, uh, Your Honor, and um, thank you. Voilà, ma présentation. Merci, Monsieur le Président. President, thank you. Le Président. Merci. The uh, trial chamber will decide as soon as possible upon the order of the trial La proceedings and will issue a written decision in uh, due course. Et rendra une décision par écrit en temps utile. Before turning to a brief review of the list of potential witnesses, Avant civil parties, and experts, de la liste the Chamber would like to provide a brief update on the filing of the list of documents and exhibits. La on 8 April 2014, the parties were ordered to file an updated list of documents and exhibits they intend to produce in case 002 02 that is document E305, and on the 8th of May 2014, the new GC defense team notified the Chamber that since it did not submit original list of documents and exhibits, 
contenu du fait qu'elle n'avait pas déposé de liste originelle de documents et de preuves en formant un ordonnance à la Chambre sur le dépôt It is unable to en préparation pour le procès en 2011 et n'est pas en mesure d'actualiser ces listes. That is document E305-3. The co-prosecutors, civil party lead co-lawyers and key support defense team all found updated list in pursuant to the trial chambers order. That is document E305-13, E305-14 and E305-12 respectively. In these filings, the parties have indicated that they will offer the chamber several thousand documents during the case 002-02 proceedings. The trial chamber is currently reviewing these lists. La chambre est à examiner ces listes. It appears that several documents were not previously included in the party's original list. Ne figurait pas sur la liste originale. The chamber again reminds the parties that they must apply under internal rule 874 for the inclusion of these documents in case 002-002 in accordance with the chamber's previous ruling. That is document E305 E305-1. On 24 July 2014, the Nunchia defense team submitted a list of new documents and exhibits. That is document E305-5. Turning now to the list of potential witnesses, civil parties, and experts submitted by the parties for case 02-02, the Chamber reminds the parties that they may apply for the hearing to enter a closed session and that the discussion will otherwise continue with the use of the pseudonym provided to the parties on 24 July 2014. Each party shall have a maximum of 30 minutes to address the Chamber. It is for the parties to decide how they will allocate their time when addressing the Nous laissons aux parties le soin following de décider issues. comment ils répartiront leur temps sur les questions suivantes. The parties have so far proposed 88 à ce jour, civil parties, les parties ont proposé 20 experts, and 121 witnesses, et 121 témoins, totaling 329 individuals. Pour un total de 229 individuals, E305-4, E305-5, E305-6, E305-7, Additionally, the co-prosecutors have proposed 36 further plus, reserved les witnesses ont 36 in view of the réserve. cumulative size of the party's list and the length of time it would take to hear these individuals. Tenu, the Chamber invites the parties de to discuss a possible reduction of, the, of their tous ces list. Tous ces témoins, La Chambre invite les parties à discuter d'une possible réduction du nombre de personnes sur leur liste. The Trial Chamber takes this opportunity to again remind the parties of their obligation et la Chambre souhaite to ensure that their submissions, including Internal Rule 87-4, request for the submission of new evidence at trial, y compris are made in a diligent and timely fashion. On 24 July 2014, the Nunchi's defense team submitted a list of new individuals. There is five witnesses and one expert to be heard at trial. There is document E307-4. On the afternoon of 28 July, the co-prosecutors filed a Rule 87-4 motion regarding their proposed witnesses, civil parties and experts who were not included in their initial list for case 
The chamber's preliminary reaction is that such a filing is very late indeed, and probably too late to be addressed fully at this hearing. Et sans doute, euh, les co-prosecuteurs ont withdrawn seven witnesses from their recently updated witness list for cases of the CSO2 slash CSO2. Ils ont récemment actualisé pour dossier 002-02. They seek to substitute three of them with one reserve witness and another witness from their 2011 list. Figurant sur leur liste de 2011. They also seek to add one more individual Les to their case 002-02 list. À leur liste du dossier 002-02. The lead co-lawyers submitted for filing their Rule 87-4 motion only yesterday afternoon. Avocat principal. The Chamber has been obliged to remind the parties constantly that all steps taken in preparation for trial, including the provision of recent submissions in support of requests for the inclusion of new evidence, must be completed in a timely manner. If they are not, the parties risk delaying the commencement or the smooth progress of case 002-02. The Chamber invites the parties, if they wish to do so, to provide oral responses to the co-prosecutor's Rule 87-4 motion, but note that if they do not avail themselves for this opportunity, any written responses to the motion si should be filed in accordance with the internal rules. Given the timing of their filing, the lead co-lawyer's motion is yet to be notified to all parties at the time of the commencement of this hearing, and therefore no oral responses will be sought to this motion. Nous ne demanderons pas Any à ce que des réponses verbales soient données. Toutes réponses écrites devraient être déposées conformément Next, au règlement an issue arises pertaining to a request for protective measures. The co-lead lawyers for the civil parties initially included civil party 2CCP 238. Les principaux pour les parties civiles avaient Previously, TCCP 19, as a civil party, whom protective measures were sought. However, they have since indicated that the protective measures are no longer necessary and have rescinded their request for protective measures. De mesures de protection. That is in document E305-7-2. The Chamber observes that the submission of unsubstantiated requests for protective measures impact upon the preparation de, for case 002 de using des both resources de and time. On sur la du the Chamber reminds the parties of the necessity of ensuring that such requests are substantiated and that they may liaise with the witness and expert support unit to discuss any general matter, including the protective measures framework applicable to the tribunal. Le cadre des mesures de protection applicable au tribunal. The trial chamber trusts that in future all parties will comply with their professional obligations. Que à toutes les parties se the cha à the leurs trial chamber will provide the other parties with an opportunity to object to the inclusion of civil party to the CCP 238. 
The Good chamber TCCP notes that the co-prosecutors have also proposed to hear these individuals. The chamber notes that the co-procureurs have also proposed the comparison of this person. Finally, the chamber invites the parties to comment on the objections to the list raised by the accused and possible defense team. That is document E3059 and the initial co-prosecutor. Document E three zero five slash ten. Co procureur national. The other parties did not avail themselves of the opportunity to comment on the updated witness civil parties and experts list. Non, pas sur les listes actualisées de témoins parties civiles et experts. The chamber will also consider the objections raised by the accused and possible defence team to certain individuals proposed in the co-prosecutor's updated list and their argument that they do not have sufficient information in respect of the certain individuals and the scope of the trial to assess the proposed witnesses, civil parties and experts. The chamber invites the other parties to make submission on the case and policy defense team's position before according the case and policy defense time to respond. The trial chamber now invites the parties to comment on these issues. The chamber invites now the parties to make des observations sur ces questions. We would like to give the floor to the prosecution. You may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. I'll briefly address some general issues and then turn it over to my colleague, Mr. Boyle, to address the specific objections. Your Honor, one point I'd like to make is that what we've tried to do in all of our filings is to assist the trial chamber to select the witnesses and the documents that are most conducive to determining the truth. In this case, each of the uh, parties have worked on this case for years, and as time goes on, as we've heard evidence, as we've seen documents, we have a better understanding, and I'm sure that's true of Your Honors also, of the issues and the evidence, and also some witnesses who were available previously are no longer available. So we have tried to diligently um, respond to all of Your Honor's orders, including the 11th June order regarding the new witnesses and in filing our responses and motions. In relation to documents that were not on the list in 2011, it's our view and our hope that Your Honors would consider those when the parties attempt to present the documents to the court, whether or not there is a justification or compliance with 87.4. And I will say this on behalf of the prosecution. In relation to any witness or document proposed by any of the other parties, we will not object in any case because a document wasn't on the 2011 list. We don't feel that we're prejudiced if it wasn't on a 2011 list as long as we have sufficient notice now of the witness or document. And also, we also took to heart and considered carefully Your Honor's request that all of the parties consider a reduction in the witnesses. We understand the need to make this trial as efficient as possible. Again, that's why we've tried to concentrate on selecting those witnesses and documents we now believe are most relevant. We reviewed all of the evidence. And as Your Honor just mentioned, we dropped several witnesses from our proposed list just in the last few days in our recent filing. And we now have proposed 123 witnesses. However, most of these are crime-based witnesses, and we have estimated that the testimony of all of these witnesses would take approximately 118 court days. Given that the prosecution bears the burden of proof, 
to prove all of the elements uh, la de of each la crime alleged, at each site alleged, beyond a reasonable doubt, we have selected what we thought feel is the minimum number of witnesses that uh, we can be assured we would meet that burden. Possible, and we've cut out many witnesses we would like to call, trying to make it uh, reach a minimal number of those sufficient to meet the burden of proof. So unfortunately, at this témoins, time, we uh, cannot cut any further witnesses. Pour, uh, there is a possibility, uh, as the trial evolves, and even after we read the judgment from case 0201, procès, we may have a slightly different view of which uh, witnesses are essential, and if so, we will certainly notify your honors. Uh, and Mr. Boyle will address other issues. We will modify our position on the names of the witnesses that we would like to see. Good morning, Mr. President. I'd like to thank the Chamber for the Bonjour, opportunity Monsieur to Président. respond to the objections raised by the Kusampan defense in E3059 against some of the witnesses, experts, and civil parties proposed by the co-prosecutors. I will be responding to some of the objections raised by the Kusampan defense, and my colleague, Ryang Seng, will respond to the remainder. I will begin by responding to broader categories of objections raised by the defense before moving on to responding to objections to particular individuals. Uh, At paragraphs 18 to 27 of the Kusampan filing, the defense object provisionally to witnesses and civil parties for whom the parties do not yet have access to all of their statements. In addition to the witnesses identified by the Kusampan defense in that filing, the co-prosecutors note that yesterday the chamber and the parties were notified of the prosecutor's filing E-307-3-2. Co-prosecutors rule 87-4, motion regarding proposed trial witnesses for case 002-02, in which the co-prosecutors identified certain proposed witnesses for whom additional statements were obtained in the case 3 or case 4 investigations as further described at paragraphs 19 to 22 of that filing the co-prosecutors have requested permission to disclose these statements to the trial chamber and the parties in case 2 but thus far, the Office of the Co-Investigating Judges has not yet granted us permission to do so because of concerns about the ongoing investigations in those cases. The co-prosecutors submit that the trial chamber should defer ruling on whether to call the affected witnesses and civil parties until such a time as all of the individual's relevant statements are available to both the trial chamber and the parties. The co-prosecutors also note, however, that since the Kusampan defense filed their objections in May 2014, the co-prosecutors have uploaded a number of documents to the shared materials trial, including many statements by proposed prosecution witnesses, thereby giving the defense access to these statements. The co-prosecutors informed the chamber and the parties that these documents were available on the shared, shared materials drive by email on 30th June 2014. I will now move on to address the Q-Sampan objections at paragraphs 39 and 40 of E305-9 to three expert witnesses and one reserve expert witness proposed by the co-prosecutors. These experts are two TCE-85, two TCE-86, two TCE-88, and two TCE-89. The co-prosecutors first note that the defense's objections in these paragraphs are not to the admissibility of these experts, but to the weight the chamber might ascribe to any testimony they provide. The defense argued that these experts would not be impartial 
and therefore their testimony should be afforded little weight because they were previously affiliated with or worked for organizations focusing on the Khmer Rouge or because they previously worked for certain offices within the EUCCC. Notwithstanding that the Q Sampan defense do not, in this section of their filing, object to the admission of these experts, the co-prosecutors make the following brief observations. First, the co-prosecutors observe that this chamber in E215, titled Decision on Assignment of Experts of 5 July 2012, stated at paragraph 15, quote, the mere fact that an expert witness has a previous association with an external organization does not disqualify him or her from being called as an expert, end quote. And decided, this chamber decided, in paragraph 17 of that decision, to consider any specific and reasoned challenges to an expert's testimony arising from the expert's affiliation with an external organization when evaluating the evidence. Second, in relation to an expert's prior employment by offices of the ECCC, the co-prosecutors note that in E283, titled Decision on Designation of TCE 33 of 26 April 2013, where the trial chamber was considering defense objections to la calling Stephen Hedder as an expert witness in case 002-01, both the Nuon Chair and Q Sampan defense objected to calling Stephen Hedder as an expert, arguing that he could be neither independent nor impartial because he had previously worked for the Office of the Co-Prosecutors and for the Office of the Co-Investigating Judges. This chamber, at paragraph 15 of that decision, adopted the reasoning of the ICTY Appeals Chamber and decided to call Mr. Hedder as an expert, noting that any issues of impartiality could be explored while the witness was on the stand and that the chamber would assess the weight to attribute to the expert's testimony in light of all of the submissions made regarding the expert. The co-prosecutors submit that these proposed experts, should they be called, would provide highly valuable evidence to this chamber as it searches for the truth in case 2-2, and should they be called, would provide their testimony as experts consistent with their oaths and obligations to provide information with the utmost neutrality and objectivity. Next, I will address the objections of the Q-Sampan defense at paragraphs 49 and 50 of E305-9 to the expert witness and reserve expert witness the co-prosecutors placed under the title overview in their proposed witness, expert, and civil party list. The co-prosecutors proposed two TCE 85 and as a reserve two TCE 89 in that section. The co-prosecutors first note here that here the defense have not made arguments objecting to calling these witnesses based on the or these experts, excuse me, based on the particular evidence they would or would not be able to provide or based on their qualifications but rather they object based on a claim that calling an expert that can testify on a number of different areas would be repetitive and therefore wasteful of the court's resources. The co-prosecutor's explanation of the experience, knowledge, and expertise these individuals would bring to the chamber, which was included in the co-prosecutor's witness list, makes clear that these experts will provide valuable evidence that is not repetitive of evidence provided by other witnesses, experts, or civil parties. Moreover, the co-prosecutor's decision not to place these experts under any one issue or crime site's heading is indicative of the wide variety of areas and issues on which they would provide valuable information to the trial chamber. The breadth of those areas is further reflected in the specific points of the indictment they would be qualified to provide evidence on, 
as identified, as identified in the co-prosecutor's witness list. Indeed, calling one expert witness who would be able to address so many points is not repetitive, but efficient. And it is because the expert's testimony would be conducive to ascertaining the truth across such a broad range of issues that the co-prosecutors propose they testify at the end of the trial, when that testimony could draw together the evidence in disparate areas already presented. At this time, following on the President's invitation earlier, I would like to propose that we go into closed session to discuss the remainder of the Q. Sampan defense objections in order to more clearly address the objections to particular individuals without revealing their identity through circumstantial information. The President, could the Prosecutor enlighten the Chamber of its uh, justification for your request? Yes, Mr. President. Um, we believe that uh, for the remaining four oui, individuals who in the, the Q. Sampan defense uh, have objected to and which we would like to respond on uh, certain details in the discussion uh, of those objections uh, could potentially, despite the use of pseudonyms, reveal uh, who, who those individuals are. And so out of an abundance of caution, uh, we propose to go into closed session. However, should the chamber prefer to continue in open session, we will, of course, do so uh, to the best of our ability. The President. I hand over to Judge uh, Sivakat Wright. Judge, please proceed. Thank you, President. Uh, the Chamber wishes to ask for one clarification of your submission 
uh, that uh, it ought to go into closed session to discuss the remaining uh, witnesses proposed by the Kyo Sampan defense. We simply wish to know if there are any issues for concerning protective measures for these four witnesses. Thank you. Si vous entendez soulever des questions concernant des mesures de protection pour ces quatre témoins. Uh, Judge Cartwright, uh, just to just to clarify on, on, on the premise, these are um, a, a responses to objections that the Q Sampan uh, defense have made to um, uh, to individuals proposed by, by the co prosecutors. Um, and uh, I am, uh, there are no protective measure issues um, uh, in, in effect de mesures de protection concernant ces témoins. How about the defense team for uh, Kiel Sampan? Do you have any observation to make concerning the request by the co-prosecutor for the closed session for the four uh, witnesses in the list of witnesses proposed by the prosecutors? Mr. Kungsman, thank you, Mr. President, and good morning again, Your Honours. The request by the co-prosecutor uh, to enter into a closed session, I don't think that uh, it is necessary because those witnesses have the pseudonym given by the trial chamber. So the limitation of the discussion uh, uh, may be confined uh, to the uh, things that can be uh, discussed or heard uh, in public. Uh, and I don't think that, again, this uh, request should be entertained. Thank you. The President. Thank you. The chamber would now like to rule on the request by the prosecutor requesting that uh, we proceed to a closed session to hear the four uh, witnesses. The chamber does not grant uh, this request because um, it does not have any effect on the protective measure. And in addition, the trial chamber has given pseudonym to individuals proposed, so they should, uh, we should proceed to discuss them based on this uh, basis. Now, the prosecutor can resume your observation. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, before I turn the floor over to my colleague, Liang Seng. I will briefly address the defense's objection to the calling of two TCCP 237, which they argue would be wasteful of the court's resources. The co prosecutors submit that two TCCP 237 
who has been proposed la, by both the civil CCCP parties and the co-prosecutors to appear in case 2 slash 2, has valuable, unique, and extremely detailed evidence to provide regarding the acts and conduct of the accused that otherwise would not be admissible due to the operation of this chamber's decision on evidence of the acts and conduct, acts and conduct of the accused. Additionally, since two TCCP 237s renewed indication to the lead co-lawyers that he wishes to provide evidence in case 2-2 and is not seeking protective measures, the Witness and Expert Support Unit has contacted the civil party by phone and confirmed these facts, as indicated by document E-2-9-4-2-3. One of 9 4, June 2014. Therefore, the co-prosecutors request that the chamber call this civil party to provide evidence because he has important information to offer on the roles of the accused. He has clarified that he is not seeking protective measures and therefore there is no reason not to summon this civil party to provide evidence. Thank you, Mr. President. I will now turn the floor over to Mr. Seng Liang to continue our response to the objections. First of all, good morning, Mr. President. Good morning, Your Honours. And good morning to everyone. I would like to respond uh, to uh, three uh, witnesses and experts objected by the Defence Counsel for Q. Sampon. And these uh, witnesses and experts, I would like to call them one, TC, two, TCE. A2, and one more expert, 2 TCE95, and witness expert, another witness expert, TCE93. To begin with, I would like uh, to uh, discuss T, 2 TCE82. Document D268-3.1, E3-3416, the defense for Q. Sampon argue um, concerning the uh, summoning of this uh, individual witness is that um, she is not qualified as an expert. Uh, she does not have concrete uh, research methodology in relation to uh, her book and, uh, uh, entitled Gender-Based Violence During the Democratic Cambodia uh, Period, and that uh, sources of data collection is not reliable. If we look at the uh, legal framework applicable before the uh, court, as well as the uh, Cambodian law and international uh, practice, um, she has not demonstrated uh, her qualification, or there is no uh, criteria for the uh, uh, judgment of the credibility of anyone to be an expert uh, witness. The former uh, okay. in the uh, case uh, dated the 3rd of uh, June 2003 and Gallic case on the 2nd of July 2002 ruled that in order to be qualified as an expert, there must be um, expert. provision concerning uh, training as well as um, 
qualification so that uh, that expert uh, can explain the issue at stake. Montrer que cet expert a une formation ainsi qu'une expérience uh, lui permettant d'expliquer. Therefore, uh, the argument uh, raised uh, by uh, uh, the defense counsel T two T C uh, E eighty two who does not possess a PhD uh, degree is not necessary. Uh, what is important uh, is that uh, she will assist this chamber uh, mobilizing her specialized skill in order to make the event uh, easy to understand, particularly the application of policy on uh, forced marriage and uh, rape uh, in that context. Her book uh, written within the context of gender-based violence or sexual violence at that period is very important and relevant uh, to the charges brought against the accused. As for the issue raised um, concerning the case before us, uh, she interviewed some 700 uh, people. She conducted an interview with 100 person uh, directly and the uh, staff uh, from the uh, Defenders Project. And she also interviewed with uh, 600 other uh, individuals, uh, with 200 students conducted interview uh, with the other witnesses uh, under her direct supervision. Uh, and those students were from Banya Sastra University. And her study uh, in 2006, which was her first study, it was comprehensive and thorough concerning the forced marriage under the Khmer Rouge regime. If you look at the substance of the argument of the Defense Council concerning the methodology of her research, for TCE82, they argue that uh, it lacks professionalism and it does not demonstrate a, a very clear uh, methodology and uh, they also question the standard of the research. As for the question concerning the, un, uh, the reliability of data collection uh, by comparison you know, use uh, to the unreliability is unsubstantiated. And the necessity of the work depends on the management uh, of the author. And for this reason, I believe that it is important that the person be summoned by the court and clarify uh, on her research. Uh, for the question concerning the reliability of uh, this particular expert uh, is not well substantiated. Uh, for TCE82, uh, she has been working for 17 years and she has understood uh, the education system in Cambodia very well. She has been a lecturer in universities. She has um, published a number of documents uh, concerning gender issue in Cambodia. This uh, manifests uh, the fact that she is one of the uh, respected experts in relation to research as well as the methodology in conducting interview with witnesses together with the, you know, the, con uh, the conclusion uh, she uh, draw from the research. And she has published a number of other documents concerning other issues in relation to um, gender issue. And aside from the uh, publication of the gender-based violence during the Khmer Rouge uh, regime uh, back in 2010. Other than gender issue uh, in Cambodia, she uh, has been a lecturer, uh, a guest lecturer at Panya Sastra University, and she has been a uh, consultant uh, on gender issue with Ministry of Women Affairs in Cambodia. Of course, uh, TC uh, e82 is not the only expert who can um, enlighten the court on the gender-based violence during the Khmer Rouge uh, regime. That's why the prosecutor has not objected uh, to the uh, defense uh, counsel for Kyu Sampon uh, requesting the chamber to summon another 
uh, expert uh, to uh, testify concerning the forced marriage uh, during the Khmer Rouge regime. Indeed, the two experts have uh, focused on two different areas, uh, and they also based on different uh, rationale and sources of data. But these two witnesses are very crucial to enlighten and shed light uh, for the uh, court concerning the forced marriage, the rape, and the policy of the democratic Cambodia concerning uh, marriage. Now I would like to raise another uh, issue which uh, the defense team for Kiel Sampon has objected against uh, 2 TCW95. This uh, document, uh, this witness, document E3 slash 1822, E3 slash 2653. This witness was originally proposed by the Office of Co Prosecutor because the uh, publication concerning the Commission of uh, Crimes and Treatment of Cham uh, during the Democratic Cambodia period. This research is relevant and it provides a direct account of crime against humanity as well as genocide against ethnicity. The Defense Council argues based on two grounds. One is the uh, qualification and educational background, because uh, they say that uh, this particular witness has no uh, qualification necessary uh, to testify on this uh, issue. And secondly, uh, this person is the victim and also the witness of the um, Democratic Cambodia. And she used to work with the uh, documentation center of Cambodia. And now she is also one of the staff members of the Office of Co-Investigating Judges. Of course, the two books have received um, from the witness 2CE95. Uh, they provide uh, sufficient information concerning the treatment of Cham ethnicity uh, during the Democratic Cambodia. What is important is that this uh, book uh, provides uh, information concerning the witnesses and uh, documents concerning the uh, treatment of the Cham by the Khmer Rouge from 1970. And it also uh, describes the um, uh, rebellion of the uh, Cham ethnicity, the forced evacuation of Cham, the execution uh, and massacre of Jams uh, in Kruchma in 1978. The uh, execution of Jam uh, group in S21, as well as the estimation of uh, Jam executed under the policy of the Khmer Rouge. The uh, research that leads to the publication of uh, the two books um, on the execution of Cham uh, was included in the list of documents in K02, and we believe that this is the um, uh, credential that uh, confirm that the witnesses and experts are qualified to testify on this issue, and I am sure that these individuals will shed light uh, for the chamber concerning this uh, fact. And I believe that uh, these are the uh, victims who are the researcher on jam ethnicity and also the person who conducted investigation and there has been argue, argument that uh, this person will really be biased in providing expert uh, testimony but let us uh, look at the uh, previous ruling of the chamber which uh, decided that uh, the uh, protest concerning the impartiality and the independence of uh, witness is an issue that is relevant to the weight uh, to be given to the evidence. It is not. It has nothing to do with the um, admissibility of the document. 
au témoignage d'une personne et pas nécessairement. Now I would like to turn to the objection by the defense counsel for Kim Sam Pon against another uh, expert witness. La comparaison d'un autre témoin expert. TCE 93. She is one of the witnesses proposed by the co-prosecutor and Nguyen Chia defense team. She was uh, proposed to testify on the demographic uh, statistics, particularly concerning the people who died during the Khmer Rouge regime, um, in particular the Vietnamese and uh, Cham. Witness 2 TCW93, uh, according to the Defense uh, Council, has no knowledge or experience to testify before this chamber. Now, if we look sujet. at uh, her previous uh, training and education concerning uh, demography, obviously, it is clear that she has been dedicated her entire life profession into uh, this demographic study. Uh, she uh, studied econometrics and uh, she has a master degree in econometrics and a PhD in uh, demographic. And she worked uh, in the ICTY, uh, in the Office of Court Prosecutor over there since uh, 2010. And before that, uh, she uh, used to work with the uh, national demographic situation in the Netherlands for some six years. And she published a um, report, academic uh, journal, a discussion paper, as well as um, a dissertation and other analytical paper. Uh, and she has um, sufficient uh, experience in uh, analyzing a particular demographic issue. And the expert uh, 2 TCE 93 has demonstrated this uh, issue in her report uh, entitled Victims of the Khmer Rouge Regime in Cambodia from April 1975 to January 1979. Document E3-2413. The objection on the um, article authored by her concerning uh, the uh, demographic study that is based on the European uh, experience uh, that does not uh, mobilize her skill to conduct a study in demographic situation in other part of the world. Actually, this uh, objection failed uh, to look at the fact that certain experts have received a sufficient experience and training uh, and they are flexible and good enough to adjust to situation in other places. So uh, PCE93 uh, experts and research is clear that she has sufficient experience uh, and qualify enough to mobilize her skill to apply in the various uh, contexts relating to the facts before the chamber. The objection uh, that the comments of the expert 2TCE93 have been uh, criticized in other field which people may not uh, find it reliable. Uh, that was due to the different view expressed by this uh, individual. Indique, uh, que des observations, les conclusions the de cet expert chamber of the ICTY court have thus far rejected uh, certain comments by the expert due to the reliability of the research methodology they have employed. aurait rejeté certaines des conclusions de l'expert en raison de la méthodologie employée. Even those in in case Simic, the chamber Par exemple, dans objected uh, the 
expert uh, comment, but in uh, public and Hukon, the chamber accepted uh, her finding. La chambre avait des avoués, and Luki uh, case, dans which uh, was also referred to by the defense counsel, Lukic, actually the chamber okay, accepted uh, her a fait référence, la chambre a view, which was cited uh, by the uh, in the ruling of the chamber, according to the report that the expert uh, will provide the testimony okay. that. Kill Sampon Defense Team has not provided any uh, explanation or justification that uh, the uh, view of the expert is not acceptable. Justification pour expliquer en quoi les conclusions de l'expert ont été rejetées. Uh, my last response uh, to the objection by the defense uh, counsel that uh, the expert to TCE 9.3 is biased due to the fact that she was uh, once a staff member of the Office of Pro Prosecutor at ICDY. Uh, this was uh, an issue to be decided on the weight uh, to be given to the evidence, but the actual weight will be assessed based on her testimony in court at a later stage. For the uh, a foregoing reason the Office of Co-Prosecutor uh, would like to request the Chamber that this uh, expert uh, be summoned uh, to testify before this court. I am sure that these experts are very uh, crucial uh, to assist the court in ascertaining uh, the truth uh, throughout the uh, evidentiary hearing. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, um, Mr. Merci. Prosecutor. The time is now appropriate for adjournment. Uh, the chamber will adjourn now for lunch and resume at 1.30 this afternoon. Security guards are now instructed to take uh, Mr. Kyu Sampon to the holding cell downstairs and have him return to this courtroom this afternoon before 1.30. The court is now adjourned. Something, Groucho.